solving inequalities. When we solve inequalities, the process we use is very similar to what we use when we solve equations. We will use the addition property of equations just exactly in the same way we use it for equations. The multiplication property of equations is different when you're dealing with inequalities. If you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a positive number, then the multiplication property holds. It's only different if you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number. If you do that, you have to reverse the direction of the inequality symbol. So if it starts out a less than, it would end up a greater than symbol. So let's solve a few inequalities. Here we have 5x plus 9 is less than 2x plus 3. So we need to get our x on one side of the equation and all of our number terms on the other side of the equation. So to get my x's here, I want to get rid of my 2x, take it over here with my 5x. So since it's a positive 2x, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides of my inequality. That's going to give me 5x minus 2x plus 9 is less than 2x minus 2x plus 3. So I can collect my 5x and my 2x together, which would give me 3x. So the left side of my inequality is 3x. I leave my inequality symbol the same. But on the right side, the 2x minus 2x is 0. So I have a 3 on the right side of the equation. Now I've got my variable term on one side. Now I want to move my numeric terms, the terms that do not have the variable, on the other side of the equation. So I subtract 9 from both sides. So you can write it either horizontally or vertically, whichever way you prefer. I'm writing it both ways so you can see either method. Positive 9 minus 9 is 0. So the left side is just 3x, and the right side, 3 minus 9, is negative 6. Now, to solve for x, this means 3 times x. So to undo multiplication, I divide by 3. So I divide by 3 on both sides. I'm dividing by a positive 3. 3 over 3 is 1, so that leaves me with just x on the left side of the inequality, and negative 6 over 3 is negative 2. So I really didn't do my steps any differently than I would have if that had been an equal sign in the middle. I just didn't have equals. I had less than all the way down on this problem. This means that my solutions are any number x that's less than negative 2. If I were to graph that on a number line, this is just a rough sketch here of a number line. If this is 0, negative 2 would be right here. It would be any number from the negative 2 on down. So any of these numbers down here would be solutions. Negative 2 would not be, but any number less than negative 2 would be. Here I have 2x plus 1 is less than 8x plus 25. So I'll use the same process. I want to get my x terms on the same side of the equation. So I want to get rid of this one. Typically when we're using inequality symbols, it's better to put your variable on the left side of the equation and your constant terms on the right side. So I'm going to do that by subtracting 8x from both sides. So that will give me 2x plus 1 minus 8x is less than or equal to 8x plus 25 minus 8x. 
So when I collect my x's together on the left side, my 2x minus my 8x is negative 6x. I still have the plus 1, so I have to leave it there. And I still keep my inequality symbol the same. On the right side of the equation, the 8x's add up to 0. So that leaves me with just 25. Now, remember I'm trying to get my x by itself, so I've got to get rid of this plus 1. I do that by subtracting 1 from both sides. So now I have negative 6x is less than or equal to 24. To get my x by itself here, I need to divide by a negative 6. This is when you have to be careful with inequalities. When you divide by a negative, the inequality symbol is just going to reverse. It's going to turn around and point in the other direction. So now I have x is greater than or equal to a negative 4. So here my solutions are any numbers that are bigger than or equal to a negative 4. A little sketch of this. If this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, here's my negative 4. Negative 4 would be a solution, and so would any number up here bigger than negative 4. Now here is a compound inequality. Remember compound inequalities are really two statements in one. What this means is 4 is greater than negative 2x, and at the same time, negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 6. We could solve these separately. I could solve this one. If I solve this one, I would divide by 2 to get my x by itself. Oh, I'm sorry, divide by negative 2 to get my x by itself. So that would give me a negative 2. Because I divided by a negative number, my inequality symbol would have to turn around. So I would have negative 2 is less than x. When I solve the other inequality, I would divide by negative 2. And that would give me x is less than or equal to positive 3. Because again, I would have to reverse the direction of that inequality symbol. So we could do that separately and get two separate solutions here. But we also could do it in one step just working towards getting the x by itself in the middle. On both these processes, what I did was I divided by negative 2, because I wanted that x by itself in the middle. So that would give me a negative 2. I've got to reverse the inequality symbols. Negative 2 is less than x, is less than or equal to positive 3. So here are my solutions. Here's my 0, here's my negative 2, here's my 3. My solutions would go from negative 2 all the way up to and including that positive 3.